The moment, the day I discovered this, my life has been transformed. I was like, wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. The same thing I'm sharing. Do this and you will succeed. Don't mark my words. Mark the scriptures. There are evidences of success doing this. You know, many only want to answer their money problem before their existence question. You know, so they put the money problem ahead, thinking once there's money, then every problem is solved. Um, this is key. This mentality, this mindset is key to your joy, to your peace and fulfillment, which is what many search for when they, when they seem to have gotten this money. You know, we daily want to fill a void within. You know, that, the void that constantly yearns for answers every day every day if you want to be sincere with yourself you know there's something within you that is telling you there's something more there's something more there's something missing there's something missing you know and this void which can only be filled with the knowledge of jesus christ yes many know about christ and even the devil you can practically call you know, if you go outside right now, ask 20 people. I'm sure the 20 people, 100% will tell you we've heard about Christ. But the point is, many do not have a relationship with him. Now, this relationship is what is actually the foundation to the life of meaning. Your life does not have meaning when you do not know Christ. Because only in the knowledge of Christ, then you begin to exist. You know, the life of meaning is finding answers to who you are and why you are here. The eyes of God daily search for anyone who will fulfill his heart desires for humanity. And that's what Second Chronicles you know, 16 verse 9 it says, It says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. God wants you to do his heart desires. And that is the reason he has brought you here. You only add, you know, to the number when you do not know why you are here. You know, let me be a little bit hard. You are yet to start living until you know why you are here. God watches over us to perfect his interests. Not just you as a person, but the purpose he made you. You know, or else you become a waste to, the, to your generation. Because there's something you are supposed to be fulfilling. You know, like you, know, like you have a car or the, the car engine. The moment a tool is missing, that engine cannot properly function. The same way, the day your car stops uh, working or moving, it becomes useless. And rather, rather than it occupying space, you know, in your garage, what do you do to it? It is disposed. This is the reason you will spend money to fix that car. And when it is, you know, it is confirmed, concluded that this car cannot be fixed, then it is, it is disposed. So, you know, so is man. Matthew 28 verse 20, you know, reveals the only condition God's presence will forever be with us. You know, what does he say? He say, you know, he said, you know, the first is to save nations. If you look at verse 19 of that Matthew 20, then teaching them to observe all things whatsoever he has commanded. Now, any man at the center of this you know, he's guaranteed his presence. You know, he said, "Lo, and I will be with you to the end of to the end of the age." Meaning that, you, you are, that that man is guaranteed of his presence, of his help, and of his encouragement at all times. Because you go through difficult periods, what encourages you? How do you survive those uh, those difficult periods? It is presence that brings comfort, that brings encouragement, that brings help when you need help. That's what his presence guarantees. But so meaning that your life, you know. You know, success and blessing lies in the discovery of your purpose. God will send, God will send whatsoever you desire or need to fulfill purpose. Look at, you know, look at, look at this. Consider this. He said, who at any time 
serve as a soldier at his own expense. Who? Who? And who plant a vineyard and does not eat its fruit? Or who tends a flock and does not use the milk of the flock? Do you plant a farm? Do you plant a vineyard? And you do not eat the fruit thereof? It's not possible. God will not send you on any errand without giving you everything you need. And this is the reason many who discover purpose usually or always become rich. It is the riches that you see at the end of the day and you begin to castigate them. He's doing this, he's doing that. But the point is that when that man was so in the place of faith, in the place of prayer, where were you? But God, of course, will always prove them. He proved Abraham. God proved Moses. You know, Moses suffered, you know, chose to suffer affliction, you know, with, with his brethren, with the Jews, than, than enjoy the pleasures of riches in the palace for a season. Because he knew there was something more than that palace. There's something great. And at the end of the day, Moses became the president or the leader of a new nation that came out of God. Because he understood purpose and, God, and he went through the process. God proved David. God proved David. You know, have you, do you remember David in the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the cave of Adullam? You know, before he went to the cave of Adullam, he went to his enemies for help. And when he got there, they identified him as this person who turned against us in the world. And what did David do? David was coming as he was bringing out speed, you know, to roll down his, his beard and all those things so that they can think that this is a madman and they threw him away. And he knew it was a wrong thing to have gone to his enemies for, for help. So what did he do? He went to the cave of Adullam and he came to the end of himself. The Bible recorded that there are many vagabonds, you know, the misplaced. Everybody came to join him and he became their leader. That was when God began to bring him up. You know, Jesus was proved. The Bible says he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Jesus was offered a short call to inheriting the earth. Look at Matthew 4, 7 to 10. The devil took him to the mountain and said, just bow to me, I'll give you everything. And this is what we do. Every time you are in the place of purpose, the place of fulfillment, there will always be offers. But if you search within, you will know there's something about this. They will ask, always tell you to compromise. You know, come and sleep with me. You'll be, I'll, I'll make you so-so person, you know, in, in the office. Come and sleep with me. in a little pathway to promotion. And you do this and you do that and all those things. Come to me. Join our circle of influence. Then your ministry will grow. Have you not heard that? Have you not seen things? And, and the point is, every time this comes around, you should always know that God has something in stock and it's very, very close. You know, compromise to grow, compromise, 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 compromise everywhere. You know, arrange marriage and all those things when there's actually somebody that God has prepared for you. And this is where faith comes in. Faith comes in. Faith is the vehicle, you know, that will take you through the journey, all through. The problem is that many drops off, you know, many drops off when faith gets to the desert. Faith will always pass through the desert where you cannot see anything. And that is the reason a lot of people drop off. Am I sure God has called me? Am I sure God asked me to do this? There's no support coming. Instead, I'm, I'm, instead of uh, getting something, uh, my, my business is going down and all those things. When God wants you to actually hold on to him, it's just a little more time. You will not remain in the place of desert forever. But what you will do forever is to live a life of faith. Praise the Lord. By faith. By faith. Is the whole journey of a Christian is by faith because it takes faith to please God. The unfortunate thing is that faith is not a rocket, neither is it a jet. Praise the Lord. It's a slow moving vehicle. It doesn't move at the speed of light. And that is why people are discouraged. You know, you know, and, and you know, and God designed this to be so for a purpose, to build us through the process. But when we look for shortcuts or compromise, what do we do? We destroy the process and kill the tenacity of the audacity of trust that should be developed in God. Hebrews 11, look at 13 to 16. Hebrews 11, 13 to 16. Look at it. Look at verse 13. They this all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. For they that say such things declares plainly that they seek a country 
verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had the opportunity to have returned. Look at verse 16. Interesting. But now they desire a better country. What do you desire? That is an heavenly and heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them, you know, a city. Has prepared for them a city. Praise the Lord. You know, I've discovered there are Christians who are radical, they are rugged, and are even faithful. But you know what? They are faithless. So many faithful Christians don't get answers to their prayers because it takes faith to unlock more physical blessings. You know, it takes faith. So you see that the more the people with faith receive more blessings than the ones that are even faithful, but faithless. By faith, we move out, you know, achieve our dreams greater than us and our environment because what? Faith pleases God at all times. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, 5 to 6. Say it, verse 6 says it is without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, it is impossible to please God. And this is where prayer comes in. Don't forget, we are talking about um, prayer, faith, and purpose. And now this is where prayer comes in. You know, the only thing I want to tell you about prayer is that prayer is what prepares the atmosphere for your faith to be boosted through the word, the word of God. Of course, it's, it waters the ground to stand on. When there's prayer, there's, you know, there's this, this, this desire to search the scriptures. And when you search the scriptures, you look at the experiences of, of, of the account I called. I mentioned David, I mentioned Moses, I mentioned Abraham, I mentioned Jesus Christ. You say, if this could survive, then there's something within you that will stir up. You know, the letter clear, but the spirit giveth life. One of these days, your eyes will open to the word, to your word. You know, your personal word, you know, the spoken word, the rhema. And when you, caught, when you catch this, my brother and sister, when you run, you run with a purpose in mind. You don't run aimlessly like the one that all fights as the one that beats the air. Because why? There's something within you that is carrying you and grows your faith. Here's my submission, brother. Here's my submission, sister. Prayer, faith, prayer and faith are the two pillars that hold purpose to its fulfillment. You know, Start your journey by prayer. Faith will come. Then you will discover your purpose. God bless you.